Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, thank you both for your service. Uh, congratulations on the nominations you received, but thank you also for being willing to serve. Neither of the countries to which you've been nominated uh, are easy postings, uh, nor are they altogether safe postings. And so we are grateful for both of you answering the call to serve, serve your nation uh, in challenging times. Uh, General Abizet, I, I want to start with you. Saudi Arabia is, in my judgment, a, a deeply problematic ally. Uh, their human rights record has been sorely lacking. Uh, they have, for many years, been willing to fund jihadists on the principle that if you feed the crocodile, perhaps it will eat you last. Uh, their conduct with regard to Mr. Khashoggi was abominable and unacceptable. On all of those fronts, I think we should be clear and explicit uh, condemning their actions. At the same time, they are nonetheless an ally. And critically, they are a vital counterpoint to the nation of Iran. And as I look to the Middle East, the rivalry between Iran and Saudi Arabia, any conduct that the United States Congress does to weaken Saudi Arabia vis-a-vis -vis Iran, to my mind, is harming the national security interests of America. Because a stronger Iran with an Ayatollah Khamenei pledging death to America, funding terrorists actively trying to murder Americans, a stronger Iran makes for a more dangerous world. Do you share that assessment, and what role do you believe Saudi Arabia plays in counterbalancing Iran? Uh, thank you, Senator Cruz, for the question. I certainly share your sentiments in your description about Iran. Maybe 15 years ago, maybe, I would have shared your description about Saudi Arabia. There was absolutely too much turning a blind eye towards extremists leaving the country and causing problems elsewhere. As I look at it today, I don't think the problem is solved, but I think it is getting better. There are joint task forces for combating terrorism. There's joint task forces looking at the economic flows of money into the terrorist networks. We notice here recently that Hamza bin Laden was stripped of his citizenship, that others have been forced to pay a price for their support of terrorism to Al-Qaeda, ISIS, or indeed even supporting the Iranian state. So it is incumbent upon the United States to continue to press the case that good allies do not support terrorism anywhere. And, and can you describe the importance of a strong Saudi Arabia as a check to Iran? Senator, I think you did an adequate job of that. I don't know what I could add. Is there any coherent or rational argument that Saudi Arabia poses a, a comparable threat to the United States uh, to that of Iran. Senator, when I look at the reform vision of 2030, if we can support it moving forward, it's a plan for diversification of the economy. It's a plan to begin the empowerment of women. It's a plan to make the armed forces more professional. It's a plan to give the young people of Saudi Arabia, a hope for a better future. If that plan can succeed with the support of the international community, I believe we will see a change, an important change, that will be good for all of us in Saudi Arabia. What do you believe Iran is trying to accomplish in the Middle East? You know, Senator, we've had this conversation before, and I appreciate we've had it. Uh, and as we've noted before, I firmly believe that the good people of Iran 
are just putting up with the IRGC Quds Force and the Mullah government. Given the opportunity for a better future, just like the Saudis, if they had a vision for a reform movement, if they had a vision for a better future, the people would move in that direction. But right now, the IRGC Quds Force and the radicals are in charge, and we need to keep the pressure to cause them to ultimately be deposed by their own people. I agree with you. Uh, Ambassador Tuller, one of the more troubling developments in Iraq has been the growing influence of the Iranians, both Iranian Shia militia and also direct or indirect Iranian control of the Iraqi uh, <coughs> institutions of government. How significant do you assess that threat and what should we be doing about it? Senator, I think it is a great threat. It's one that concerns us, and I know it's one that concerns the Iraqi people. I think one of the most powerful forces in Iraq, leaving aside the sectarian in influences, uh, ethnic differences, and political parties, is Iraqis share a strong sense of pride in their Iraqi Arab identity. They do not want to see their country weakened, divided, sovereignty impinged upon, and they see the major threat of that coming from Iran. So I think as we empower Iraqis to build the kind of country and future they want, that's what we have um, to build on. Okay, final question. Talk to me briefly about the Kurds. The Kurds have been loyal allies. They have spilled blood supporting the United States of America. Uh, they have, I think, been neglected and mistreated far too often by United States foreign policy. Can you talk about the importance of assuring that we don't abandon the Kurds once again and, and leave them subject to the predations of their neighbors? Uh, Senator, that U.S.-Kurdish uh, relationship is a historic one. It's a long-lasting one. I think it's a very important one. I intend, if I'm confirmed, to make sure that that relationship between the United States and, and the Kurdish people is one that's solid, that gives the Kurds the sense of security they need, that they're never again in the future going to be dominated by the type of regime that uh, Saddam Hussein represented in Baghdad. At the same time, I think it's very important from the U.S. perspective that we see good, solid relationships between Baghdad and Irbil, and I intend to uh, do all I can to make sure that that relationship is a positive one. Thank you.